All right, so welcome to our fourth Lunch with Lex session. I'm Amy Good, the program manager here at the Community Education Center and alumni from the leadership program. I will be your moderator today. This is a modified version of our regular 10 month leadership Elk Cameron program. We are excited to share a few of the highlights from that program with you through these virtual monthly sessions. To give you a background, the Leadership Out Cameron program began in 2007 when local leaders recognized the need to more deliberately provide opportunities for community awareness, leadership development, and civic readiness. Today we have almost 200 alumni. The program is coordinated through the Community Education Center with the help of many alumni and volunteers. We are now accepting applications for the 21-22 LEC program. And for more information, you can visit uh, communityedcenter.com. We are excited to announce that there are several opportunities to receive local gift cards a discount for next year's LEC program. If you complete the session evaluation for these lunch sessions, you will be entered to, to win local off. gift cards. If you attend five or more of these lunch sessions and complete the session evaluations, you will receive a certificate of participation and a coupon for 25% off next year's program tuition. And finally, for those of you who attend five or more sessions and complete the evaluation, you'll be entered to win the grand prize drawing of free tuition for next year's lunch program. And for more information on that, you can go to communityedcenter.com. Today's session, I just want to remind everyone to make sure that you are uh, muted. So we're not in the bright Zoom uh, area because I'm right here by my window. Whatever. Today's session is um, the virtual tour of the historic and beautiful Johnsonburg Community Center. That could be me. Now what do I do? Typically, our regular LEC session for December focuses on history and preservation. The last several years, we have spent the morning at the Johnsonburg Community Center, starting with a tour of the building and then learning about additional historical places throughout Elk and Cameron County. For the afternoon, we headed over to Ridgeway and spent the afternoon on a walking tour throughout the town, stopping at historical buildings along the way. As I reflect on my LEC class that I took many years ago, I will say that this day for me was somewhat emotional. I left that afternoon with not only a better understanding of what our area stands for, but a renewed sense of pride and appreciation for all of those before us making our towns what they are today. Even though I am pretty active in my community, it energized me to continue promoting this area and doing what I can to preserve what we have. I actually get re-energized each year that I attend this session. Many of our LEC alum will tell us that even though they have lived here all their life and thought they knew everything about our towns, this program introduced them to many new places in our area they never even knew about. So today we're gonna to give you a little snippet from our program by starting with a tour of the center and a discussion with the director who can answer any additional questions you might have. Then we're gonna hear from one of our LEC alum, Jake Newman, who will share his experience last year working on his LEC project at the community center with their pool renovations. But before we jump in, I wanna give you a brief history of the center. The Johnsonburg Community Center was first established in 1919, constructed by Hyde Murphy, which you will see in the tour. Its original conception is the same purpose of what it stands for today, a welcoming space that wishes to always be a reflection of what the town needs. The building has continually been renovated to accommodate to the needs of the community, always supporting the same goal, a place where we all come together. Some of the activities they provide, you will see in the video, including the summer day camp program fitness center, open gym and track, swimming pool, and many events hosted throughout the year. I apologize that we cannot do a live tour of the building today, but due to internet connection issues, we have pre-recorded a tour of the center that I'm gonna play in a few minutes, and then the director will join our session to add additional comments and answer any questions. So sit back and enjoy, the video is approximately 15 minutes.
And you may need to adjust your volume um, if you're having a hard time hearing. Okay, here we go. And talk about the projects and programs going on at this time. Welcome, Chris. Hey, thank you very much. Yes, as Sheila has said, I am the director here at the Johnsburg Community Center. I've been director here for quite a while. Um, our building, excuse me, um, our building is now just over 100 years old. It was built by Hyde Murphy. It was built in Johnsburg for the, the people of Johnsburg to use. So a lot of our things that you will see here are very um, unique to this building in itself. So first we'll start off, let's see our Christmas tree. <laughs> um, and here's our gym. A lot of uh, people have grown up in this area playing basketball in our gym and also, um, you know, come in. We have an uh, indoor walking track around the gym. 32 laps makes a mile. Um, we have, uh, currently, we have aerobics program. We have a yoga program. And our uh, cheerleading girls are practicing for, I'm not sure what yet, but they're practicing. <laughs> and we also have boys playing basketball. So it is kind of fun. Everybody has a, a nice, unique thing. And with COVID, it's very hard to kind of play programs and get everybody used to being in and using. Um, we did some restoration work in here. All these, all these uh, walls were sanded, restained, and varnished, all the lighting. So we have nice, bright lighting again in here. So let's go. <laughs> We will go downstairs first. One of the things you'll notice also is on the walls there are um, there are pictures, or well, actually they're the original blueprints of the building. So we were very fortunate to have them. And at one time there was a small two-lane bowling alley that was a set pin that boys got paid a whole quarter or a nickel to set the pins. <laughs> So we have marble stairs as you go down. Be very careful. Locker rooms on either side. Um, and at this time, we're still not able to have people take showers. We're following the governor's guidelines for the COVID. Um, and this is our pool, our wonderful pool. <laughs> and we even have, um, they just recently put all the windows in. Uh, part of that was help with Leadership Bell County. One of the girls um, had a program that she was able to raise money, so that helped us. We've got, we just got our pool all refilled, and um, a lot of the work that was redone is shown on these boards. There were different things that have happened, um, and all the, all the work that's been done here.
in-town family, 264. Uh, Out-of-town family, 300. Student and college, 60. A year. Thank you. All right. Thank you. <laughs> one of the There's cool, um, one of the neat things, the left, the left, the left board, I wanted to. Oh. makes a mile. We also have a spiral staircase that was put in that you had to come up from downstairs all the way up to here on that and it's the only way you got up and down. You were allowed to come. As a kid you weren't allowed to come up through the big steps. It made too much noise I guess. So The murals on the walls down there were done by Nancy Tomaski. Um, and okay. I'm going to scoot around this way. stacks sat on the floor so the, the floor is you know from the sun and that has made a has made a channel on it and this is available for like a meeting room maybe coming usually when we do day camp during the summer our kids when it's a we're very fortunate by having such a big building um, our kids can watch a movie in here and we can always do all kinds of stuff inside because we have the gym and we have the pool as long as it's not thundering or whatever. So this is the reference. This was the reference room. These are theater seats from the theater down the street. <laughs> and also these bookshelves came from across the street where we had the newsstand, which we had a candy store. <laughs> so a lot of things have been have come back to us. And have been repur and have been repurposed for us to use, so which has been really really super. So we're able to have a little bit of new and a little bit of old that kind of all combines to give everybody that you know remembers what happened with the community, you know, was with the community center. Okay, keeps so going and going. We keep going. Yeah, like I said, there's one floor even above this next floor, but <laughs> you're not going there. Okay, these. One of the things about these, the, 
these were the original, these are all magazine covers. At one time, the paper mill, New York and Penn, all the paper that they produced went to Curtis Publishing Company. And Curtis Publishing Company, these were the magazines that they put out. So we're very fortunate to come up with some. And the only ones I'm missing are the comic books and the national analyst. So let's keep going. Now we're officially on the third floor. So this was the ladies' parlor. Um, the ladies had this was more like a lounge. Right now, uh, Grey Knights, they're part of our, our building. They use it for their practice and also for their storage. So um, it has a bathroom in it, and it's just, and at one time this was also a preschool room. We had a preschool program here. Is this original too? This yep. Place? It, pretty much everything, as we were doing any type of restoration work, and one of the fortunate things is that, I want to put it, people that work here are like keepers. <laughs> Do not throw things away. And that's probably, a, and that is a good thing, because eventually at some point you, you find, oh my gosh, where did this go? We need this. We need to make this look like it did, make it be the building that it was. All the original stained glass, and some of it has been um, fixed. And actually all, with the exception of like ceiling fans, a few things, most of the lights that are here are the original and have been restored so we could use them. So. Anyway, this is the billiard room, which last year you guys were here. <laughs> anyway, the billiard room originally had four pool tables and one billiard table, and they were all huge eight-foot tables that filled this room. And generally it was guys on the room anyway. <laughs> so, and all the furniture that you'll see in here as far as the tables, these higher chairs, these are the pool chairs that you sat waiting you know, for your food to play pool. So. I think this is probably one of my favorite rooms. Only because there's so much light and it's just such a, a really awesome room. Okay, here we are. Up here in the hall. This was the actually called the club room. There were weddings, funerals, and dinners held here. Um, right now, it's a gymnastics room. We have a really nice gymnastics program. Uh, Laura Sword from St. Mary's does it, and our kids just think it's great. <laughs> and, and this balcony up here that you can see, that's where your bands were. And there used to be an upright piano in there at one point, um, but all the bands played up there. And this is where you had dinner, you had your proms, you name it. Signature on wood floor kitchen. Here in the kitchen, <laughs> the buffet. And, and all the, they prepared all the foods here and everything went out the windows. They set it and it went straight on out. Um, we are very fortunate. We still have um, a lot of the original dishes that were um, from the Kevin Club, which was from the community center. Oh, no.
and that's from um, I'm Lucky Kid. <laughs> what can you tell me about these lights? These lights, these are the original lights, the sconces. You'll find them in the club room and the billiard room. Um, they were, and we were able to find a few extra that were stashed up in the attic, so they put them out here. But they're really, so they give such a nice glow, is I guess what I want to say. So they still work? Uh, these two out here do not. They're here for sure. <laughs> the ones, but all the other ones, they do work. You know, and um, they keep, Grey Knights does storage in here, but when you came to any event up here, this is where you checked in your coats and whatever here. And then there's a ladder that takes you all into the attic in there. <laughs> so, that is what we got. <laughs> graduating from Johnsonburg, I spent a lot of time in this building. Yeah. So it was a pleasure to have you, Chris. And well, thank you. At this time, if there's any questions, we'll take them. Thank okay. you. All right. So as you can see, there is a lot of detail work throughout the center, and they have done a great job in preserving this historic building. So if you're ever in Johnsonburg, I encourage you to stop in and take a look. Okay. All right. Sorry about that little technology hiccup. Um, so as I was saying, if you're ever in Johnsonburg, I encourage you to stop in and take a look. I'm sure Chris would be more than willing to show you around. So at this time, I believe Chris is on online and I want to welcome Chris. Chris, are you with us? Chris Bressler? I thought I heard her earlier. But I guess she's not. Um, I know that Sheila has a. <laughs> I think you have me now. <laughs> there you are. There okay. I am. <laughs> okay, welcome, Chris. Hi. Um, so thanks for joining us. Uh, do you um, have any additional uh, thoughts that you want to add? After watch, uh, having us watch the video? Well, not particularly. We are slowly opening again, but now we've got some information today. We're not sure where we're going, but as of today, um, our pool has been open and we have people swimming again, and the lion is spitting forth into the pool again. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, so we're just kind of playing things slowly to see where we'll be standing here by next week. Whether, the, from our understanding, we may end up being closed again. So we're hoping that's not going to be the issue. But just kind of playing by the rules and seeing where we go. <laughs> yeah, we definitely have a lot of difficult times right now and things yeah. are daily. So uh, I appreciate that you're able to stay open for the community as long as you can. <laughs> we're trying. <laughs> Uh, so does anyone have an experience or memory from the community center that they want to share? Nope. <laughs> Sheila, did you, I thought you had something that you might have wanted to add. I, I've never been there, but I'd love to go. It looks absolutely beautiful. Okay, first of all, the building is amazing. The restoration is amazing. Um, you really need to see it in person to see the history and the beauty of the building. Um, growing up in Wilcox and graduating from St. Mary's, our proms were held in the one room. Chris, which room was that at? That would have been upstairs in the ballroom. Okay. Um, so I have a lot of fond memories of the building, utilizing the building over the years that I was growing up. And again, you really need to see the, the building, the rooms 
are amazing what they were able to restore. So thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> This is Kate Brock. How are you? Chris, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, Kate. How are you? <laughs> so can you talk um, about how many students do you guys serve in, in anything, either, you know, year round or in your summer programs or what, you know, what does your membership look like? Our membership, well, it's kind of fluctuated over the last two years. Uh, everybody's kind of starting to come back. And we were, unfortunately, we could not have our day camp program. And we usually average 30 to 40 kids with the day camp program. And I think when I think about day camp, and they go from usually from four and up. And one of the things that I really enjoy about day camp is my kids continue to come each year. And even as they get older, they eventually end up being, you know, um, camp helpers, counselors, et cetera. And they just seem to never go away because they like being here. <laughs> and so I'm, I really miss them this last couple of years. Um, as far as high school and that, we have a few groups. We're starting to get back with basketball, the boys getting together to play basketball, which is nice to see, which we always have had. And then also um, our cheerleaders are kind of moving back and forth. We have a large um, adult usage too. A lot of seniors like our building, especially with the pool in the morning and that and the accessibility. But as far as number wise, I can't give you off the top of my head right now, <laughs> but that's it. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Anybody else have uh, a question for Chris? All right. Well, thank you, Chris. I'm going to move on to um, okay. group project. Part of the LEC program includes a group project. The project addresses areas throughout our county, such as maybe a blight to flight area, uh, raising funds, community engagement. And each group will pick a local organization to work with and complete a project. So at this time, I, I want to introduce Jake Newman. He was one of our student LEC members last year and his group worked with the Johnsonburg Community Center to assist with their pool renovation project. So Jake, thanks for joining us today. Do you wanna share with us the details of your project? Yeah, sure. Can you hear me all right? Sure can. All right. So first uh, in our first program uh, that we attended in St. Mary's, I believe we learned that we would be in group projects. And so after we were assigned our members, you start to meet and, you know, sort of come up with a plan. And we decided, my group and three other members, that we wanted to do a project for the Johnsburg Community Center. So we realized that they were having a lot of trouble raising funds, especially for the pool windows. And so that's what we, we wanted to do. So we started out, we drafted a letter to local businesses and we asked for donations to help with the cost of the windows. And each window costed around $3,500. And after sending the letters, we began to organize a charity event at the community center uh, that would have live music, food. And we were pretty much in the final stages of organizing that. And then of course we all know what happened. So we weren't able to have the event which is unfortunate. So we were kind of beaten down and kind of sad that we weren't going to be able to raise even more funds for the community center. So, you know, we kind of put our heads together and we contacted the local newspapers again, and we asked for a longer list of businesses. Um, so after sending a new wave of letters, and I also went to the Johnsonburg Rotary Club and attended a meeting and asked uh, for funds for that. So we ended up surpassing our goal um, uh, and we raised over $9,000 for the community center to put up uh, brand new windows. And this is months later, I, which is kind of cool. I received a text message from a fellow group member and I saw the pictures of the newly installed windows. And it's kind of cool to see 
you know, the fruits of your labor, the, you know, all the hard work that you put in, it's kind of cool to see, you know, it actually come to fruition. So I thought that was really cool. And um, that was, you know, I just played a small part, but, you know, it, it was a big project, but um, I think we did really well with, you know, the circumstances permitting. So uh, if you have any questions about the project or um, how it started, uh, how we chose the project or anything, just let me know. And I realized I didn't really introduce myself. I'm Jake Newman. I'm a senior. Last year, I was in the LEC class. I'm a senior at Johnsbury Area High School. And last year, I participated in the uh, LEC class. So if you have any questions or also wanted to, I don't know, are you guys doing group projects this year, Kate? Are they doing? No? Okay. Well, I was going to say, like advice for that, but I guess you're not doing that. So, um, but I guess I'll talk about a little bit of the LEC program as a whole. Um, it's kind of interesting today, I'm in, I'm a yearbook editor and we're trying to get together uh, ads for our ad pages at the end of the book. And I contacted somebody that I had met through the LEC program to, who worked at a, you know, business and they were gonna put an ad in the, in our yearbook. So. To this day, I still use the connections and I, that I, you know, have learned from the LEC program and the, the people that I met. So I encourage you to really, really take in all of the information because I learned so much, you know, about the area. Um, and I think it was just a really, really awesome program. So if you have any questions, just go ahead and let me know. So Jake, um, you raised over nine thousand dollars. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's that's awesome. And I believe you had a project that you guys were going to do that didn't happen. Yeah, we were um, going to do the the event. Unfortunately, you know, we couldn't do the event, and so, you know, I guess every project starts out as being something really big, you want to do so much. And ultimately, it's honestly better to start a little bit smaller so you can do a really good job at that one small thing. So that, I would say, it was better to probably move it down a little bit. And I, you can probably see here the Dan's Pro Shop. We also got a donation from them. They donated a plaque to put on the wall with all of the people who donated. Um, and you can probably see it right there. So that was really nice of them with the big LEC at the top, so. And I'm glad that you mentioned about the whole networking that helped you yeah. this year. That's one, uh, that's one thing about this LEC program is that you do get introduced to so many people in so many different areas and um, the networking component is a huge component of this program. I know that it has helped me and it has helped a lot of others. So I'm glad that, thank you for mentioning that and how it has helped you this year. Yep. Does anybody else have any questions for Jake? And, uh, that is huge. You know, we've had throughout the years with the, the LEC project groups, I think probably almost every year we have a fun, a, a group that does some kind of fundraising. And, and I have to say, this was probably the most cash that was raised by a group. We, we had one year, there was a group that also for Johnsonburg, they, they raised money for the Knot Hole Association to put some playground equipment over the fields. And they did raise $18,000, but big chunk of that was a grant. So the group actually wrote a grant and also did some cash fundraising. Um, but, but by and large, Jake, you know, your group just did a fantastic job. Just thanks. It was a lot of work, but it, it was definitely worth it. So. And thank you for the nice words about, about the leadership program. Oh yeah. It's, it's, I wish I could do it again and I'll, I'll probably come back and come to what, when we can, when you're doing the, you know, the actual, um, you know, in-person ones, I'd love to come back to, to some and, and revisit them. Well, thank you. We'll be sure to keep in touch. All right.
right. Anybody else have any questions? Um, Kate, do you have anything additional that you want to add? Nope. I think we knew this was going to be a shorter agenda for the day. Okay. All right. So if no one has any more questions, I'm going to thank you for joining us today. Uh, we'll be sending you a follow-up email with a link to this recording and a link to an evaluation. Your honest feedback is highly valuable to us. We use it to continue to improve our sessions. And don't forget, if you complete the session evaluation, you'll be entered to win a local gift card. If you're not signed up, please consider joining us next month. Uh, St. Mary's Police Department K-9 unit at work with Chief Nicholas, Sergeant Schaefer, and Nando. And that will be on January 13th. So thank you again for joining us over your lunch hour. We look forward to seeing you again.